warm and spicy and gingery and creamy and amazing. It, that's how I like to drink my tea. <laughs> so this morning I'm going to show you how I make my chai tea. <laughs> chai tea is delicious. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so our ingredients are celery seed, star anise, green cardamom, cloves, and cinnamon, but I, if I have cinnamon sticks, that's what I'll use because they're so much better. This stuff is just, <clears throat> well, anyway, cinnamon's a good flavor, but this stuff's kind of mucky. And, of course, ginger, which is our star ingredient. So, first thing you gotta do is grind up the spices. The celery is really the only thing you have to grind, per se. The rest of them can just be kind of crushed. You don't ever want it to be a real fine powder because it just kind of gets too strong and kind of salty and gross. So just about that much. Oh, you wouldn't believe the smell. It's awesome. So there's your celery seed and that can go right into the pot. And then next we have the star anise. You get good at doing things with one hand when you have children. So I just crunch it up. About there. That's good. Into the pot. Cloves are next. There we are. So how many have we got? That's... Oh yeah, I should say I'm making tea for two. So that's enough cloves for two. If you're just making it for one, that'll be way too strong. Okay, crunch them up. I remember the first time I tried making this and I just ground the heck out of all of the spices. Gross. <laughs> I won't do that. Okay, green cardamom, same thing. Making it for two, so that's enough. So you want to crack open the pods. And I do a little bit of grinding, not much. There, that's it. Green cardamoms are ready to go. Okay, the cinnamon, like I said, cinnamon sticks are so much better. And if you're using a cinnamon stick, all you want, that's good, is one stick and then you crack it and then stick it in. Okay, for the ginger, so I want about that much ginger. And then you don't have to peel it. I do, I just like to, I don't know, I think that it tastes a little stronger when you peel it, but I don't know. So I just cut the most most of the skin off. Okay, and then just, really is that so? Mila's adding her two cents. Cut that up. You want them in fairly well, smallish chunks, just so that when you boil it. get lots of ginger flavor in the mix. Okay, next step is the water. I always use uh, filtered water because I think that, I, well, nobody needs to drink chlorine. So pour in about, about a cup and a half. There you go. And then hit the heat. Let it boil. So it's boiling. It's been boiling for about 20 seconds. Let it go for about a minute, just so that all of the flavors get a good chance to bump together. And then I add tea. This is just a orange pico tea. Just an orange pico tea mix. I used to get fancy. I used to buy the loose leaf black Darjeeling tea. And um, I realized through tasting the beautiful tea that my friend makes, that this is pretty good actually. So, orange pico tea. Not too long, you don't want your tea to overpower the rest of the spices, but maybe about a minute. And then take your tea bag out, don't let it steep any longer. Here's a neat little trick. Um, my brother, who's becoming quite the tea, tea connoisseur, says, <clears throat> you never want to squeeze the last bit of tea out of your tea bag. Because if you do that, out come the tannins. You know those tannins that come into your mouth and they make your tongue kind of grate against the back of your teeth. 
Also, that's what stains your teeth. So you don't want tannins because that, that's the bitter part of the tea. Don't squeeze your tea bag. Just take it out. And drip. Okay. Take your tea off the heat. So we've removed our tea from the heat. It's still pretty darn hot. Pour in about a cup and a half of milk. Now, the reason my tea is so creamy and delicious is because I use 3% milk. I love 3% milk. I think if you're not going to use the fat, just don't drink it. Because if you take the fat out of the milk, you take the flavor out of the milk. So, you put in your milk. That will bring the temperature of the tea down enough that hopefully I don't kill all the good, good stuff in my honey. This is, of course, unpasteurized honey. I got about, well, I have a tablespoon there. And I just let it melt in. Okay, now the honey's all dissolved and the last thing that you want to do, the last thing you're going to do to make amazing tea is pour it through a little filter. To the sound of Leela banging on her drum. So there you go. Warm, beautiful, amazing, intoxicating chai tea. The tongue ground. Right.